Hey guys, how's it going? I oh, know, I oh, know, I'm out in the bloody Jeep again. You guys are getting sick of seeing bloody uh, non-motorcycle footage. But uh, hopefully this is going to be the last one. I reckon now I've got pretty much the Jeep and the trailer set up uh, to, you know, to the point where it's going to be a, a, a pretty good setup for being a, uh, you know, a motorcycle support vehicle as such. Um, and obviously by doing that, the Jeep's now set up for, you know, whatever me and Nay want to do with it or, or whatever. So we've basically got the best of, best of all worlds. Sorry, I'm trying to bloody navigate through all this shit. Um, I've got to find a spot to pull up and I'll, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll pull up and just give you a quick run through all the shit that I've done to the Jeep. Um, so I know some of you guys are interested in that stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, as you guys know, you know, I'm no expert at this stuff or what I've done to this. You know, all my videos are basically, uh, Jesus fuck, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's all right. That puddle was a little bit deep. <laughs> Um, yeah, as you know, you know, all these videos are not bloody, you know, how-tos and, and all that kind of stuff. It's just showing you what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, if it benefits you, it benefits you. If it entertains you, it entertains you. Yeah, the usual shit. Um, all right, so, I'll just find a spot. I'm out in the, in the, what I call the proving grounds. So it's actually, the trailer's pretty well, uh, uh, chuck a block full of stuff. I've got the big esky on the back and it's got all the food and stuff that I've got for that ride that's coming up. Hence is why I've had a real rush on getting the uh, the Jeep done. Uh, getting it done quicker than what I expected I was going to do but as soon as I put that ride up and all of a sudden we've got bloody uh, 12, 12 riders, 12, I think actually no it's up to 13 riders. Um, we've got 13 riders you know, that we're taking along. And look, you know, we're not going anywhere bloody crazy or anything like that, but I kind of feel a bit responsible and, um, you know, I've got to make sure I'm doing the right thing and I've got the right things in place to, uh, you know, if something does happen, and, you know, shit can happen anywhere. You can go to the bloody supermarket and have shit happen. <laughs> so, um, that's just the way I think, I suppose. If I'm going to do something, I'll do it properly. And if I've got other people relying on me, I've got to make sure that, um, you know, I've done the best that I can do to help them. Oh, shit, here we go. Here's another bloody puddle. Okay. Uh, it's not too bad. We'll spin around up here. Jeez. <laughs> this Jeep just goes anywhere. You just point it somewhere and it just bloody goes. I'm sure in this it doesn't look like much, but there's pretty much ups and downs and shit. All right. You'll find this spot, eh? All right, guys. So there it is. That's the that's the bloody setup. That's the Jeep Brutus and the trailer. I'm gonna run around and try and bloody tell you as much as I can or as much as I can bloody remember. I'm not gonna go through everything. Um, so basically, let's start with the Jeep. It's a '99 Jeep Cherokee Limited. Um, I bought it down in Melbourne. I think most of its life, it's been a um, a Turak tractor. Uh, for overseas people or people in Queensland or whatever, Turak is a very posh place down in Melbourne um, and that's what we say, a Turak tractor is something that uh, is a four-wheel drive just driven around the bloody streets by uh, posh people, <laughs> they never take it off-road. Um, so that's been really, the interior is bloody immaculate, I've got seat covers just to protect all the leather and all that kind of stuff, but um, yeah, it's in really good bloody nick. Um, Obviously, all the, the, the under stuff um, was, you know, after 240,000 Ks, uh, it was starting to get a bit, uh, a bit sluggish and stuff, but I needed to upgrade that anyway for where I want to take it. So, the things that I've um, added to, to the Jeep are, and I'll bring you over as I do this, um, are obviously check out the stickers. <laughs> so, I went a bit crazy 
put the stickers on there. So we've got the one on, one of that on either side. We've got this big one, which I love, on the, on the bonnet. The keep on riding. That's all we got to do. We just got to keep on riding until we bloody die. Yeah, the sticker on the other side. I already had these stickers on on here. If you can see, you can see that. Of course, we got the flying doctors on there. Oh, that's the little, that's the medical kit, which I'll show you in a minute. I'm gonna stick it down there. And then I got, oh, this bloody uh, doobie, which I'll show you. All right, so, um, I've left the tires, all the rims. I tried to get steel rims, um, similar to the, the Sun Razor ones, like the, um, I've put on the trailer. But here in Australia, uh, really, really hard. We just couldn't get the right bloody size. Um, you could do it if you got a different size rim and then you'd have to run different size tyres to, uh, I don't know, it was all too much bloody thing. And I thought, well, shit, you know, steel rims would be bloody, you know, they are a bit tougher, but, um, you know, these rims are gonna do it. It's only if you're bloody barreling along at 100 miles an hour through the, you know, corrugation and potholes when you hit one of them, you're gonna bust one. So as long as we drive smart, we should be all right. Um, so yeah, I've left that. Now we've put the, we've just done the upgrade of the, um, of the suspension and that was a full suspension. So using Ironman 4x4, so it's the springs, the shocks. Um, oh, there was other bits and pieces. I'll show up a little picture of it. Shackles and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and it's actually lifted. I didn't think it was uh, gonna lift it this much because I didn't want to lift it. I didn't want that look. But uh, I was really, really bloody happy um, at the way it looks. So, so that was a, that was a bonus. That was something I didn't expect. Uh, we whacked on the the bull bar, which is a must-have. So that's a ARB. Well, I just got ARB because they had the bull bar to suit this uh, this Jeep. So on she went. And then, of course, you would have seen in the other videos, got the roof rack up there that got mounted on there that'll hold about 150 uh well it's rated to 150 it'll hold bloody more but i don't think i'll ever be putting any more than uh 150 on that and as you would have seen on the on the other video yeah we've got the hijack hijack lift the bloody shovel the hijack lift is great for now that i've got that bull bar on there I can just shove that underneath there. Yeah, you know, you've got to be careful with those bloody hijacks. They can be dangerous, but uh, you do it right there, okay? Just to be able to lift the front straight up. You know, just to get you know, a bit of sand out or put tracks under. And the same with, with the back. You put it underneath the, uh, the bull bar and uh, lift her up. It's a quick, easy way of doing it without having to get underneath the car with the, your little jack and all that kind of stuff. We've got the spare tyre up the top. And of course we've got the uh, the jerry can holder there, so we've got one for petrol, so 20 litres of petrol, 20 litres of water. Um, and then up the top there we've got those, uh, the, the track things for in the sand, we get bogged. And then of course, you would have seen in another video, was uh, was this thing, the, uh, the, the tarp. Or awning or whatever the bloody hell you want to call it. So I won't pull that out or anything like that. Um, so the next thing on the Jeep was um, the, the problem of when you're in the outback and you're bloody, you know, 100 k stretches of roads that are just full of bloody uh, rocks. Um, some of the place most people would have heard of gibber, they call it that bloody gibber stuff. So, so many people were saying about um, doing trailers and camper vans and all that kind of stuff. They have that netting along the side, along the side so that basically when the the rocks flick, flick up, <clears throat> and of course that piddly little bloody mud guard's not going to stop much. And what happens is it comes up, either hits the spare tire or something, and then ricochets, and bang, blows that back bloody window out. So I uh, I opted to go with uh, putting. Um, I was going to be Perspex, but uh, the place that uh, did this, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, trying to think what the bloody <laughs> hell oh, taken out by the bloody tree um, ah, sunglasses are made out of it what do they call that stuff I can't remember I'll think of it in a minute anyway 
the thing with this particular one is that it's it's super strong. It's stronger than the uh, than the Perspex, um, and it's very clear. It doesn't have that uh, misty look to it. So, so that's on there. It cost me 250 bucks, but she's a professional done. It was um, made specifically for this. Got a little suction cap. So it comes off easy. You just got to lift it up and then do each each of the uh, the suction caps and then it comes off but yeah it'll never that will not come off at all so basically I'm not worried about the the rocks hitting hitting the Jeep um, I'm basically I don't want that back window busting and then halfway through a trip and then having dust and shit coming in through the back or having to deal with it so that's what that is um, all right what else have we got of course we've now fitted fitted the Jeep with the uh, see in there which oh, thing gets through so I've just got a little GME uh, UHF radio or CB got all the little bits and pieces there and then I've mounted um, a decent aerial for it so this particular one that I've got on the moment it's a short one so that's good for hilly areas and then you'll see in here I've got a second one oh, which is sitting yeah, oh, just, oh, I don't know if you can see, just along there, that's the big long aerial. Oh, and I use that one for when we're out in the in the big flat areas. It's a more um, focused, focused thing, I don't know. I don't get into it. Basically, I've got UHF um, communications. I've got it on my bike um, now as well. So, you know, it can come in handy. I don't think it'll get a lot of use, but when you're out on a trip, or even if we're in with other four-wheel drives, just for um, between, between the vehicles, communication between vehicles. Another thing is if we're going through some tricky, tricky spots and we've got, you know, the drivers in there and then you've got someone else spotting, they can, they can talk, because we've got all these other... Uh, got the little dinky die. Um, uh, handhelds but I've also got the uh, the five watt ones so and I've got one of those on the bike so we're, we're pretty pretty uh, pretty set for that oh that's the other thing I bloody uh, which was in the other in the other video was the snorkel we uh, whacked on that snorkel so I mean snorkels not I mean it's good for uh, when you're going through big deep river crossings and stuff which I don't think that we're going to really be getting into but if it happens we've got it but also you know having it up high you know you get less dust um, up high so it should be a bit cleaner air so that was that was whacked on there as well so I suppose now we've got to go into the back um, actually no we won't go in the back yes we will <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it's, it's not scripted, I can tell you. The reason why I go in here, because we're talking about communication. So obviously we've got the UHF radio set up, which I think, you know, we've got that pretty well done. We've got uh, mobile phones, so we've got mobile coverage, um, which is only going to do you, you know, so far. But I thought, shit, Jesus, bloody hell. Oh, back to that friggin' tree again. Um... I thought, no, nah, bugger it, I've got to get a sat phone. So, I've gone and got a sat phone. Now, these are pretty bloody expensive. Um, so, what I ended up doing is I found, she's like, <laughs> right, sit me ass down. There you go. Um, I found an X, an X, they hire these out, and um, this place actually sold sold the X high ones, and it works perfect. Um, we got the, the credit for it. It's just a prepaid. Um, it's not one of the Telstra ones, which is the beauty of it. So you're not paying um, a monthly fee and you're not even bloody using it. So, um, yeah, and we've used it to send texts, to make phone calls. This particular one, the problem with this one over the, the Telstra one is if you call this um, sat phone, um, you'll get quite a, a big bill. So I think we worked it out because we tested it. Someone was saying it was like 20 bucks per minute. We, for, it was six dollars for 30 uh, 30 minutes uh, when we tested it. I was calling it from a mobile phone but the whole purpose of a sat phone is um, for us to call out if we need help um, 
uh, we've got that sat phone and we, and we can ring out and not have to rely on trying to get pick find someone on a UHF radio or, or stuff like that. So, I'll just give you a quick look at this. I can, and of course, I've aptly named it the bat phone. So it all came with this, um, it was half price basically of a brand new one. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it. You know, you can see it's got a little bit of wear now on the screen, but if I try and do this one-handed, no, I can't do it, hang on. Just turning it on, there you go, it's coming up Imasat. And basically, yeah. Oh! Fucking <laughs> hit me head all over, I'm in a really predicament here. So you can see now it's bloody uh, looking for a uh, satellite and oh, I suppose if I was oh. let's see if it finds a satellite of course you've got to have uh, clear overhead as much as you possibly can and there you go you can see that it's uh, starting to pick up the sat satellites so basically, um, then you can make a call. So there you go, communication wise, we're, uh, I think we're, I've done as much as I possibly can to make sure I'm, I'm you know, being sensible and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, all right, I'll put this away and then we'll get into the other stuff. All right, so following on with the sensible stuff, I've got a, um, a full medical kit there. So that's a, a group, uh, yeah, first aid kit. And then of course, over here, we have the fire extinguisher and a fire blanket as well. And the way I've set these up in here is that they're readily, you can see them easy. As soon as you come in to the back, you know, they're there, you can easily grab them. You don't have to move anything to get to them. Same with the, um, with the, uh, the, the first aid kit. It's up there, you can even see that from outside. Um, and all you got to do is just rip this bloody gotcha strap off and away you go, you've got it, quick as. Now I'm going to pull some of this stuff out and uh, so you can see what I've kind of like built. So doing as oh, I didn't want to um, build a purpose built um, thing, I wanted this Jeep um, set up to be multifunctional. So I didn't want to have some big huge bloody built thing in there. Um, I'll pull these out. <coughs> So I've got two eskies. I've got that small one. And then there's a, uh, a big one in the trailer. Grab that out. Yeah, that should do it. So what I did, I just got some bloody, uh, just some wood. I don't know if here's just a bit of that uh, MDF stuff, really thin, thin MDF. And just made up this little frame like that and that there is just wood I've just uh, wrapped duct tape around it just to make it look a bit pretty and then it's uh, stuck to there so that's that's on there solid but all this just pulls out really easy but at the same time everything has its little spot and it sits in there and doesn't bloody jiggle and move around well too much anyway um, all right, so what else have we got? I'll show you these drawers. So I went to Bunnings and just got these um, storage storage drawers. I'll put some duct tape just to hold them all together. They were just all separate, um, separate little, well, there's one there, one there, and then one there. So this is just getting all ready for um, ready for that that's a stove there a twin burner stove um, this can be this esky can be uh, opened up while it's in there yeah so really really cheap if this if this works over time you know, I can change that wood set up and I can make it out of uh, that aluminium framing and the plastic joiner things and maybe make a purpose-built thing because those um, those four-wheel drive um, drawers and things that you can get from them. They're bloody, they're really, really good. 
but bloody hell do they cost a lot of money like you're looking at a grand just to get some drawers for the bottom so it was a little bit more than what I wanted to spend oh I'm getting bloody puffed out <laughs> running around all right I think that's I think that's it for um, the Jeep oh no you're in the fight come on in here down here I've got uh, that's just a, a a puncher kit so if there's a puncher um, just one of those bloody doodad things a really strong one um, and then in here this is uh, the big kahuna air compressor which one thing you don't realize with uh, well, everything I've been doing is for motorbikes with little bloody tires but uh, yeah, these big four-wheel drive tires um, take a long time to pump up if you don't have um, a big thing. Oh, I can't get out. So yeah, that's the uh, the big Kahuna air compressor, and then over there is what I call the arc reactor, which I will we'll go over the other side and uh, have a, have a look at that. All right. arc reactor I'll bring you down so yeah the arc reactor it's a I don't know arc battery pack um, it's one of the new ones it's a fang dangle bloody thing battery management seven cycle I've put a uh, 105 AGM battery in that Let's see if we open this up so you can see in there that's the uh, the big battery so 105 amp hours. You can put any type of battery in there, whether it's a lead acid or a calcium or whatever other types. I went with that uh, AGM, which I think is glass mat battery. Has all these little programs and monitors and all that kind of bloody whiz bang stuff. But basically, it's power on the go. I have a cord that connects to the, um, to the, oh, what do you call it? To the, uh, cigarette lighter in the in the Jeep and what happens while you're driving along the uh, the alternator in the battery in the Jeep recharges that and then when you pull up you just you can either leave it in the Jeep and then connect your stuff in there or if you want it close to the tent or in the tent or whatever you can just leave that it's pretty bloody heavy but um, yeah it's it's portable you can uh, connect solar panels to it you got that on there that's where your thing goes to the cigarette lighter that's just an air vent on here you've got your two cigarette lighters that's just an on off to switch off the battery and then on here they have oh, there's a USB I'm hoping you can see this a USB slot there and also um, your 240 volt Duvalaki which 100 watt but it's you can't you can't put a laptop on it and it it just doesn't uh, it's too much for it so what I've got another little um, what do you call it uh, inverter or whatever um, that I plug into the cigarette lighter and then I can run the laptops off that um, and then it's got an Anderson plug and but yeah there you go so I've got that so now we've got uh, power when we're bloody somewhere that we don't have a power plug to plug into cool bananas all right, I think that's it now for that. Now we'll just get onto the quickly onto the trailer and then we're done. All right guys, so just to quickly recap on the, on the Jeep. That's it, it's now done, it's set. The bloody thing will go anywhere. Um, you know, with that suspension done and the bull bar on the front so that, you know, if you hit a bloody kangaroo or whatever, and I'm gonna bust a bloody um, uh, a radiator. Motor-wise and all that kind of stuff, it's just, the thing's bloody unstoppable. And it was funny, I was reading on, um, on the internet wiki it was rated of oh, the Jeep X the XJ Jeep <clears throat> is rated in the top 20 vehicles that just won't die <laughs> so I was pretty happy happy to know that, that that's what I've got there obviously all you Americans already know that oh shit I'm fucking dribbling on myself getting so excited um, 
It's funny, yeah, whenever you search up anything to do with uh, Jeeps, you know, whether it's on YouTube or on, online, it's, uh, it's, it's always the Americans uh, you know, on there doing the stuff because obviously it's an American vehicle and it's been around for so bloody long. All right. Um, oh, actually, if you had bought that in 99 brand new, it would have cost you $46,000. That's here in Australia. Um, I paid $4,200 for it, so... <laughs> um, yeah, and it's still in just as bloody good condition. Now, obviously, it's got wear points and all that kind of stuff. And but yeah, amazing. I'm driving around in a forty-six thousand dollar vehicle. That's a first for me. Um, all right, I'll stop bullshitting on and we get on this bloody uh, under the trailer. The trailer was just the trailer that I already had. I didn't buy this specifically, hence why it's not a, like a four-wheel drive looking bloody trailer. Um, but it is a strong six by four trailer. Um, not one of those, the, the, the cheaper ones. All I've really done is added a jockey wheel to it. I've got a spare wheel for it. Um, I've put in the, uh, the Sunraiser steel uh, rims, so they're still a 14 inch. It's not matching with the Jeep or, or whatever. You know, it's like, where does it bloody stop? You just keep putting your hand in your, in your pocket all the time. Um, it had, yeah, you because know, it had been sitting out there and I, it was just a trail for me to bloody, you know, take to the tip. So I ended up uh, uh, scrubbing it all down, uh, putting the anti bloody rust shit on it, and then I've just resprayed the whole thing. Um, but that's basically all, all I've done. Obviously, I whacked on these little uh, jerry can holders. Got them when they were on uh, sale at Anaconda, I think it was. And I've just made up some little brackets, bolted it on, so they can always come back off if I need to. Um, I've put on some extra little tie down points. Um, yeah, that's about it. All right, so we'll just go around it. Actually, I'm gonna pull all the stuff off. <laughs> so at the moment, oh, I've put in a uh, little rubber mat. Well, it's not a little rubber mat, it's a, you can see that. That there is actually uh, matting. And the reason why I've put that in there is um, just to take a bit of the vibration out of uh, some of the stuff. So like, like with the Esky, you know, I might have some glass stuff in there, so I don't want that uh, vibrating against something and uh, smashing in there. Uh, so what can I tell you about this? Not much. It's a trailer. I've got all the. I've started putting all the bits and pieces. There's tables and bloody eskies. Another two. Um, I'm going to be carrying for the ride. I'm going to be carrying uh, 100 litres, at least 100 litres of fresh water. Um, that's all the bloody chairs. Cheap bastard chairs. Oh, in here. I have. Actually, I'll grab it out. A chainsaw. <laughs> Just a little cheap Ozito bloody chainsaw out of, uh, from Bunnings. Um, yeah, that'll be uh, good for getting firewood, that's for sure. And I know up where we're camping uh, on this ride up at Melville Caves, you can grab whatever's, um, they allow you to grab the wood that's just laying around. So uh, being able to just, you know, not have to bloody try and snap bloody shit and crap or chop at it, um, we can just cut the, cut the stuff up and take it to uh, to have the fire going so yeah pretty cool and obviously I've got uh, the two petrol um, jerry cans there so with those two and the one up there um, that means that we can carry an extra 60 yeah 60 litres of, uh, of petrol which would be good good for the bikes good for the Jeep if, if need be um, yeah there you go all right so, obviously I've got a, um, if, if most of you've seen a lot of this stuff anyway, you know, I've got the, the ramp there, um, so you can get the bikes on and off, off the trailer. The whole configuration of all this, obviously I'm gonna carry stuff on the trailer, but if we have a, a bike breakdown, stuff can be easily moved between up and around so that um, I can get a bike on there. I can even get two bikes and still carry everything um, within this setup, so uh, yeah. All right, I think I've uh, babbled on enough. I might just uh, sit here for a minute, enjoy the scenery. 
and uh, head home and have a cup of coffee. All right, guys, keep on riding. <laughs>